just to drive down there in the middle of March. It's still snowing back at home in Ohio and just pack up the stuff and go down there and hope for the best is pretty much the best you can do. Actually, towards the end of last year, my dad won the double X class at English Town over there. I couldn't make it, so he drove the car and won the double X class, but lost the runoff to Barton. So we knew we were, we were heading in the right direction. Well, during the off season, we worked a lot on the showdown car, particularly. We got a new engine from Chris that picked us up quite a bit. There's always something you can tinker with and make it better for the next one. So we felt pretty good going into Gainesville. We always want to be the fastest and, uh, you know, show our our engines off, you know, uh, the horsepower that they can make and, uh, you know, there's nothing better than uh, putting quick ETs on the, on the scoreboard, you know, and um, that was, that's always been my main objective and not just for me, for my customers to be fast as well, you know, and our car in the beginning of the year was very finicky, you know, it, it, it either blow the tires off or wheel stand and, you know, uh, so we were playing with shocks and struts and basically, you know, a Mickey Thompson tire, you know, we, we screwed it to the wheel and uh, it, that, that helped us tremendously, you know. We were really trying to beat him and we missed, we missed the setup, you know, and uh, uh, he's got a very good car and uh, that thing goes down the track every time and uh, uh, they got that car dialed in and uh, at that time, we, you know, we were still kind of lost. Of course, we went down the week before and ran the Cobra Jet shootout, and that gave us a little bit of testing time with all the new fresh combination and stuff. We had a little problems with the blower a little bit, so we air freighted one in overnight and got it there for Gainesville. We were ready to go there, but we kind of still had some test runs. There's still some questions about how fast we could go and everything else. What kind of threw a curveball this year was, uh, you know, the fastest run uh, is your dial-in for your for the final. So you know now now it's playing the uh, sandbagging game. Well, that, that that is an advantage to somebody that if if you know your opponent what they should run and what you should run, you sh should not never have to run the car out unless that's what it takes. And uh, uh, even against Bruno in the final, I had a little bit. He spun, so I shut off a little bit. You really never want to show your hand. Uh, we build new cars almost every year, so that's what we went. We try to make the cars a little better. <laughs> we also continue to work on our engine program every race. Every race we pull the motor out, send it back, and we do R&D work in, until the next race. I'm lucky to ever get the motor back until the week of the race. Going into English Town, you know, we were pretty fast at Gainesville, so we thought we thought we were there. But then you get to the sea level air, and then Arnett showed up in the Copo, and Chris went home and worked on his stuff pretty hard after Gainesville then and came out. And uh, they were, they were kind of like a whole tenth faster than me, so probably seven or eight hundred faster. and being the, you know at the time the fastest uh, you know stock illuminator ever you know was and just beating out you know the the, the copo you know that uh, did it earlier that weekend uh, it, that was that was a big highlight that came about uh, basically we were still kind of playing with the uh, wheel and tire combinations and uh, you know we were chasing our tail in the first round I felt pretty confident that we could get down the track and it was going to be fast and uh, to be honest with you, uh, the 38 shocked me. I didn't think it would be that fast. We tested faster. Yeah, at that time, and like I say, I actually went there with the new rules of trying to qualify last and actually I went to a thousand foot the first qualifier and actually ended up first, which I knew we were fast, but it's the first time we really got to run the car like we wanted and in good, good air. So uh, it's, it's, it's all cat and mouse game. It doesn't always work like you want it to, but uh, we were fortunate. We had a great year with it.
got some good wins. 1-1 uh, one, one against Arnett on the light. Reaction time, that was a whole shot win. Chris, Chris blew the tires off, which was a little unfortunate for him. Kevin, he's, he was fast, and so we kind of turned the wick up a little too much, and these cars are very finicky on the starting line, and uh, um, we gave it a little too much power, and uh, it just blew the tires off. And same thing happened with Bo. That, that well, how the Mark. race worked out, it actually kind of got hot. So the sun came out, heated up the track a little bit, it got it a little tricky, and we were able to still go go down the track. And they had a little traction issues, and that got us the win. We skated by on that one. I love winning, you know, because you you know. You, you show show me a guy that likes losing, then he's a loser, you know. And um, but you know, on the other hand, when you see your customer, especially when it's a father and son deal, and they're out there enjoying the race, um, that just that makes me real happy. Here comes wheel standing rapid Roy Hill here in the second thing. It was really carried the front. Look at him go again! Roy Hill's going to the bumper hole! Oh, man, a violent landing, and he is into the wall on the summit lane. Boy, oh boy, what a ride for Hill. James I should not have even been up first round. We made some good qualifying runs. Uh, that's when the new Dodge was unveiled, Barton, and he's very, very fast. And they did a good job with it. But we knew we were going in a little, little bit behind, but first run they go to call us up and my starter quits and this is when they were starting to run because I, I like to lay around in the back so I had pro stock crew and my main crew uh, Daryl Heron and all, all my guys they jumped in there pulled the header off did it and I ran that run they had a guy waited for me it was Henson another Ford car and uh, we made that first round we won it and I won it with only half the header bolts in it we had to do whatever we can do to get yes, it. Chris Holbrook and Kevin Skinner the supercharged Mustang Cobra Jet Skinner from Grove City Ohio Chris Holbert from Livonia, Michigan. Chris Holbert's car is a terror. Whoa, look at the wheel stand for Albrook. He carries it away out there. He set it down gently. That might have given it up to Kevin Skinner to get around him. At the top end of the racetrack, it will be Skinner. You know, that, that final with Kevin, uh, we just, again, you know, we got after it a little too much. And instead of spinning the tires, the track was so good. It, you know, it went on the back bumper and we had to pedal it, you know, and, uh, and, uh, he went on, you know, and beat us, you know. Having to run Barton, I think we talked about it, that uh, I told Randy Lynn, listen, uh, he's going to have to spin. Or I, ho I hope for a, a tire spin shootout and just who can catch it first. But it, it fell our way a thousand. He and I have raced here last year. I won the race by a thousand. Uh, that race right there was seven, ten thousand. Call the top end. He's got a fender. He's got anything for Butner. No. A whole shot win for Bo Butner. He and I have fun. When we we kind of grown closer, I didn't know him much. I know the name, but uh, we we have have fun, and it's a good competitor. And people and people enjoy the Dodge, Ford, and the Chevy shootouts. Three stock showdown. This is a category that was very fun to announce and call yesterday. Bo's always good. He's always good on the tree. He always gets it down the track. You know, he he's done this a while. He knows what to do. So it's kind of it's always a mental game. You know, you got to be good. It's the same thing with Chris. So it's it's just a tough job to get it done. You know, I I thought I had that race won, and I clearly didn't. Or I had him ET wise, but. I don't know. I thought I could lay off on the tree a little bit, and it was a little bit too much. He the switch when the tree came down as Bo Butner. Can he hold him up? You bet he can. 895 with a three at 149 miles. Bo didn't get that memo, I guess. He was still 015 and drove it down there and took the win. So you can't ever take anything for granted in this. And that it's just I'm young, and that was a little learning experience for me. myself in the foot in this race. I don't like to lose, and none of us like to lose. We come here to win, but uh, we, we were up against, there's three X cars, and uh, actually, the, probably the top three in each make. Uh, we just have four down there, Mopar. Mopar's really got an advantage right now. We worked on it, we, I think we, we narrowed it up a little bit, we ran close. But uh, had a chance to win, and uh, but, but like I say, we never stop working on this. We will build a new car for next year. Couple of guys in the 100 have been qualified. 
So the head starts going to go to David Park. Yeah, uh, David David always knows how to hold some back and run it. He runs his car really well. So I, I was pretty worried about what was going to happen, but we had a pretty strong headwind, and it, it looks like their body might be a little bit bigger than ours, more frontal area, so the headwind might not affect me as much or anything, but that was another thing. Just got to go up and hope for the best. Then they stay fun. Here comes Kevin Sinner. One car goes over the left there. Raven pulls that baby back in. Right on down that seven lane top end. Red light says Kevin Skinner. Eight, five, nine, one, fifty five. You know, I mean, he's, like you said, blow the tires off against Bo or had a bad light or red lighted. or There's a million things to, to lose in racing, but there's only one way to win. You just got to do it all right. So. Okay, right here. One, two, three. Yeah. Hopefully the popularity of the class, definitely more people like it. There's a lot of people coming up asking about it. We had two or three guys that we've never even met before, but they follow the races from out here on the West Coast and come to this race to see us. They knew me, they knew Chris. I'm sure they're going over and seeing Bo. And the people love this class, and, and it, I hope somebody takes off with it because I get so much more. I've said it before. Uh, people love these Cobra Jets. They love the Copos. I get way more exposure, it seems like, other than the TV time than I do in a pro stock car. More, I was signing autographs last night on Fremont Street, and every other person I talk to, they bring up the Cobra Jet. Why aren't you running a Ford and Pro Stock? I mean, the people love it, and uh, somebody needs to take off and run with it. Ford is it's a, it's a very good company and to, for them to stand behind the sportsman racer that just means a lot you know and um, I think that's they get more out of the sportsman racer than they do you know say a pro car or something you know because this is what people can buy and, and drive on the street pretty much you know uh, I, I think the fans love it and I think it's great for the sport and it's great for the you know the the big three you know the you know the uh, Ford, GM, and Chrysler. You know, uh, you know. I know my dad's probably uh, pretty happy up there to look it down. You know, <laughs> but uh, I think it's pretty good.